Hello Salemites, welcome to your Daily Dose of Days TV. I'm going to be covering days of our lives, weekly uh, recap updates and a few spoilers for Monday, the Mar March the 13th until Friday, March the 17th, which is today. Happy Friday, everybody. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, as things went off Friday, we seen that uh, Alex and he just invited himself to Gwen's pity party. She was sitting at a table by herself getting loaded uh, because she just had some you know, bad news from Xander. He can't make her any promises and she's given up literally her life for this man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, okay, so he sits down and they start drinking and telling each other their sad, sad, heartbroken stories, uh, and then they decide, you know, let's, let's get out of here, so they go to Glenn's hotel, Gwen, Gwenny, Gwenny's hotel room where they go for a nightcap, and they end up, uh, you know, between the sheets, so, um, <clears throat> When Gwen and Xander wake up the next morning, Gwen doesn't even know. She doesn't even remember the night before. She was so drunk. She's waking up going, Matty, how much did we have to drink last night? You know, and Alex is like, Matty, should I be jealous? <clears throat> and she's like, oh, my God. So, you know, she realizes what they've done. And then, you know, her memories start coming. Uh, so, you know, they have their little chats or whatever. Um, meanwhile, Xander goes to visit Maggie at Titan, where they have an interesting conversation. And although it hasn't happened yet, I look for Maggie to give Xander a job. I know it sounds crazy, given everything that Xander has done to Sarah, but, you know, Maggie always liked Xander. And despite the things he had done, he, she felt that, you know, Sarah should have given him another chance. Now, they're setting this up for things to be perfect for Sarah and Xander. And now that they're going to have a baby, you know, things, the dynamic have changed. I guess Sarah hasn't told Maggie or anyone yet. So, uh, we'll see about that. But just, you know, the way they were talking... <clears throat> he's, you know, he was telling her about his problems with Gwen and that he told Gwen, you know, he, he still loved Sarah. He just couldn't jump into another relationship, uh, which most people can understand. But, you know, Gwen's waited a long time. And this is, her, her, this is her own fault. She decided to just give up her life and pine for this one man. So since she has slept with Xander and Alex, wouldn't it be, you know, stick in the rib if she became pregnant? It might make her be a better person, but I doubt it. I mean, look at Kristen. Uh, anyway, back at the ranch. Um, you know, Xander and, and Maggie confide in each other, and they, uh, they have a nice little talk. <clears throat> Trip shows up at Wendy's and um, where Johnny already is and uh, you know he's or maybe Johnny came in after after he, well Trip lives with Wendy so you know he's home and Johnny comes over maybe he was there when Johnny got there uh, when Trip got there um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly mm -hmm. And Tripp accuses Johnny of stealing his badge and getting that medical information he wanted on his own father. But, you know, hit the laws. Um, oh, Lord. Um, <clears throat> boy, that was a bad flashback. I was a manager of a physician's office. And I, when all that came out, I had to write our HIPAA books and stuff and put all that crap in there. It was, oh, man, it's months. <clears throat> they should pay you extra for that stuff, I'll tell you what. 
But, um, so, you know, Wendy, she's like freaking out because she didn't know what Johnny had done. Um, but, you know, in Johnny's own defense, he was saying, well, you know, I just couldn't let, you know, my uncle be poisoned, you know, and, uh, you know, they had some words and, um, that's not looking good. Johnny did apologize, though. But he's going to have to apologize a lot more. You know, I don't know if Wendy's worth all this work. I feel like, you know, Johnny and Chanel are going to get back together. And they need to be together. They're meant to be together, I think. I'd like to see Johnny get a decent girl. And I feel like Wendy's all... <clears throat> Despite the fact she's a boring, boring character... Uh, she seems very controlling over Johnny when they're not even actually dating yet. Or did they go out once? I don't know. It's not, it's, it's rocky. It's rocky. So, um, Lee, he's, he's continuing to smooth Gabby. I'm not sure what his end game is, but you will be sure by the end of this video. So, um, Lee continues trying to win Gabby over. Uh, with plans, you know, he takes her out to eat at places she likes to eat. He took her to the museum, you know, all kinds of things, just spoiling her. He's probably got a good bank account stacked up from working at Demera for so long. Okay, so, um, Stefan, uh, Johnny called and warned Stefan that he thought someone was trying to poison them. And he couldn't give him any details, but be careful what he ate or drank. And then, right then, Stefan knew what it was. Well, Johnny's got it backwards. I'm trying to poison EJ, but somebody's on to me. You know, people are on to me. So, <clears throat> he's... They had a meeting with Shen. EJ and uh, Nicole, you know, they're like partners in crime now. And I really like to see it. They seem like they're really happy, and this is, this is the time. Well, we'll wait till he proposes to her again, and then Samuel drop back in the mess, you know, because that's the way she works. <laughs> Sammy could never come back on again. She didn't come to her mother's funeral. Get the hell out of here. Anyway, um, shoot, it made me lose my train of thought. Uh, so anyway, Stefan was on to them, so he switched the drinks back, which meant EJ got the drinks that was meant for Stefan. And EJ was aggravated because it wasn't kicking in. He put it in like three drinks, at least two. Next thing you know, EJ's acting all loopy in front of Mr. Sh Mr. Chin. Mr. Shin. I keep calling him Chin. I don't know why. It's spelled S-H-I-N. Why do I say Jim? Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I'm a little self-conscious about my own chin, so I might have something to do with it. Uh, so their plan backfires because uh, Johnny had tipped him off. Uh, you know, Mr. Chin at dinner was expressing his concerns to Stefan about you know, EJ's behavior, so this was this was all bad. EJ had to go pass out, and um, that would be the end of Monday, the 13th. Now, Tuesday, the 14th, we uh, open up with uh, Eric and Sloan, you know, a morning after, and, um, Eric and Sloan. Uh, I'm gonna do a special video about them. There's some there's some odd things happening with Eric and Sloan. I need to make a note of that, or I will forget it. Right there, Eric and Sloan. Have you ever heard of a, a girl named Sloan? I have not, but I like it, and it fits her character. I think. So I'll just write it down on this way. So, uh, they're moving on from a, you know, it's a morning after. <clears throat> and uh, Eric's talking about, you know, uh, because of some of the stuff that was 
written in Lady Whistleblower, a.k.a. Leo, uh, they had some things that was, was, was going on with that. Uh, you know, exposing, like, their personal life and stuff. So, uh, Sloan was questioning Eric about that. But, you know, Eric was saying, well, I don't, I don't kiss him, Tao. And, um, anyway, she was saying, but you have just about paid, paid off my retainer. And he's like, well, I hope I, I can afford to pay your fee. Because she said he was going to, she was going to charge him for his fee. And, uh, she said, well, you're not going to stack up too many hours. Because I think this case is going to be over pretty quick. Just as she said that, she gets a, an email or an alert from, what's her name? Trask. Trask. Every time I, oh, and there's Mr. Tat. Every time I hear her name, Trask, it makes me think of this song uh, by Fleetwood Mac, Trask. <laughs> uh, anyway. Trask sent her an email and said they've changed the charges to attempted murder on, um, what do they call them? The Doomsday Brothers? Oh, the Brothers, the Brothers Grimm. <laughs> I thought that was catchy. For Eric and, uh, um, Brady being arrested. Uh, the covers on the papers and on the spectator, uh, is the Brothers Grimm. It was funny. You know, because they're not normally people who get in trouble. But, you know. Oh, my goodness. The, the things you do for love. Um, so, um, meanwhile, Belle is at, at the pub. And she's got the same email from Trask about the charges being changed on Brady. So, um. Sloan's like, this is really bad, and, and Eric says, so I'm going to prison. And she said, not necessarily. So she called uh, Stefan to set up a meeting to see if they, she couldn't talk Stefan out of dropping the charges against Brady and Eric. Uh, meanwhile, they go to the pub, Eric and Sloan, and they hook up with um, Belle, <clears throat> excuse me, and Brady. And Sloan and Belle do not like each other. So, uh, you know, but Belle said, I think we should work together to try to get these two idiots, keep them from going to prison. And so in walks Stefan because Sloan was already on top of this. She is on top of everything. She is on top of her job. She's on top of relationships. She's on top of everything. Um, she's, she's, she's very effective very efficient attorney. So, um, Stefan come in, he's like, I knew the whole game was going to be here. So, you know, Brady and Eric go over to the bar, and, 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 like they're like some kind of little backyard bullies or something. <laughs> and, uh, Sloan and Bell talk to him about, they would like to ask him, please drop the charges. Everything did turn out good for him, despite how extreme their actions were. And, you know, um, Stefan said, well, they did really do me a favor, even though it was risky and dangerous. He said, okay, he's going to, there will be no charges filed, so he's dropping charges. So the girls, you know, they like gave each other a high five, a hand slap. Yeah, good. And then Belle's like, oh, no, oh, no, I still hate her guts. And, you know, Sloan's like, totally, we don't like each other. So... <clears throat> You know, they're, they're setting things up here, which anybody can see, that Belle and Sloan are going to turn out to be good friends. May even have a practice together. I see that in my visions. In my spoiler visions. So, uh, it's just intuition. Uh, and it's hard to have intuition over when someone else is writing the story, but that's where I think is happening. Uh, and that's probably because Sloan and Eric, I think, uh, are going to end up in a serious relationship. Because Sloan has some serious feelings for Eric. She's just not admitting them, especially to herself. And that's for another video. Yes, it is. So, um, they get them off the hook. Ta-da! The Brothers Grimm go free. So, and all the, everyone is happy. Uh... 
Okay, uh, EJ, uh, he wants to go on and just confront Stefan. Uh, but by the time he goes downstairs, you know, Johnny tells him, you know, he just left. And that's because he just got the call from Sloan to come meet him. I got things a little backwards here. Uh, but Johnny walked up on Stefan on the phone, talking to Mr. Chin, Shin, yeah, uh, about, um, well, as soon as you want to get rid of EJ's CEO of the company or ban him out, whatever, I'm on board with it. And then he hangs up and, you know, Johnny's like, you really are an ass. Didn't actually hear him say the A. It sounded like you really are an S. So that's why I said it like that. So, um, they had some words, and he was saying, uh, Stefan was like, Well, you've got some nerve to talk about brotherly love. And he's like, Hey, because Stefan brought it up, but I read in Lady Whistleblower that you slept with your girlfriend, with your sister's girlfriend, and that's why they broke up. She left town. And he's like, No, my sister slept with Alan Alex Gariakis. That's why they broke up. Had nothing to do with me. And even though we may have our problems, at the end of the day, we love each other. You know, you don't drug your brother or your sister. You just don't. We're family. You know, and Johnny seemed just appalled that Stefan wasn't with the family playing. So, uh, I'm a little aggravated with Stefan, too. I mean, I was just thinking this week when I was watching Gabby and stuff, I thought, you know, I hope everything works out and she ends up with Stefan. Because, you know, Gabby deserves to be happy. Uh, there is a lot to be admired about Gabby. Now, she's pulled some underhanded moves, but she has had some things taken from her as well. So, uh, I think she's always done good about getting back up on her feet and going after what she wants. And she seemed to me like she ran to Mary. You know, with no problems at all. So, um, <clears throat> um, Leo, um, he slept in the office because he went to the hotel room and there was something hanging on the doorknob indicating, hey, go away. So he thought, Winnie, Winnie, and, um, Zandy, as he calls them, was in there cozying up. So he went and slept in the office. Well, he's in there sleeping, and in comes Zandy, flipping on the lights. And he's like, Zandy, is that you? You know, because he had a mask on, and he was acting like he was blind. He's just so stupid. He really is. Now, so, uh, he's so funny, a lot of stuff he does, but that was just stupid. They shouldn't have had him do that. He, he's going around, and blind, and blind, you know, because he has that eye mask on. So, you know, I didn't think that was funny. <laughs> I thought that, man, y'all are only on for 40 minutes, you know, take the 20 out for all the commercials, and uh, you're going to load me up with some dumb stuff here, man? Stop it. Let's get with the program. Oh. I hope I remember that. I'm going to make a video about that. Peacock's kind of lazy, I believe. And I have reasons to believe that. So, anyway. Um, he's telling Zandy, you know, well... You know, I had to, he's like, what are you doing sleeping in the office? He said, well, I had to sleep in here. I wanted to give you lovebirds your privacy. And he said, what are you talking about? And he said, you know, Gwen, there was something, whatever it was, hanging on the doorknob. So I knew y'all were busy in there. And he said, I didn't see Gwen last night. And he said, oh, well, she just probably didn't want to be bothered. She was probably in there crying her eyes out. Because after she talked to Xander, after he talked to Xander, and he's like, so you, you, I figured y'all were back together now. Your divorce is final. You know, y'all have got the paper now and everything. He said, no, we didn't get back together. And he said, he said, I still love Sarah. 
And he said, you didn't tell Gwenny that, did you? And he said, yes, I did. And he said, oh, my God, that's what she's doing. She just laying there crying over you all night long. Oh, you stupid idiot. Or whatever kind of names he called Xander. Uh, which, actually, Xander's acting like he's got a brain, finally. You know, he goes in and out of it, man. Uh, most of the time, I don't like him. But here, here lately, getting a job with Maggie would be great for him and Sarah's future and their future child. Because then when Sarah comes back, which will probably be with child in tow, uh, after she already has the baby, you know, she's going to see he's, he's already made a banner man of himself. So, of course, if I was Sarah and I ever got back with him, I would say total, total cuts with Gwen. Don't ever want you talking to her, looking at her. If you see her on the side of the road stranded, just run over or keep on driving. You know, whatever. It's just my personal advice. He don't have to take it. So, um, let's see. Gwen tells Xander, so, um, Leo says he's going to go over and check on uh, Gwenny. And that's exactly what he does. He goes over there to check on her. She's in the shower, but Alex is out getting some coffee or something, you know. Leo, for some reason, thinks that Alex is there to see him. After he done caused him to lose his position at Demare and everything. You think he wants to see you? You little twerp. Uh, so, he, uh, he informed him, you know, well, someone else lives here with you. And he's like, if you're not here to see me. And he said, oh, somebody else lives here too, Leo. And then Gwenny walks out of the shower. And he's like, oh, Gwenny? You know, and he's like, he couldn't believe it. So she got dressed and, and, and Alex got in the shower and she was telling, you know, uh, Leo, you know, yeah, we did, blah, 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 got to get to work, there's a problem with an advertiser that's pulling out and it's Chili's. <laughs> so um, she goes to the office where Zandy is there already working and he said, uh, He's like, listen, Gwen, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry about last night. I, when Leo told me you spent the night in your hotel room crying over me, I, she's like, what? I didn't spend the night in my room crying over you. I wasn't alone at all. And he said, no. She said, no. I was between the sheets with, with Alex. And uh, he said something. He said, so you're just going to try to hurt me saying things like that? And she said, you heard me. I was busy all night long. Shagging. Your cousin Alex. And, I mean, you can tell Xander's losing it. He's losing it. He's losing it. He ain't got no reason to lose it. He ain't done nothing but yank that girl around. She can shag whoever she wants. And she pretty much told him that. Uh, let me see if I made any more notes on it. Is that Tuesday? Are you kidding me? Um, uh, oh, God. I guess this is one. Okay, I got that. I got that. I think that's all of Tuesday except one little thing. And th this may have been just the funniest thing all week. Um, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so Alex and, um, where did I write that at? Alex and, uh, what's his name? Sander are walking towards each other in the square. And Alex already knew he was going to be pissed off. Because he could tell, he was pissed off. He could tell the looks of Xander. They're walking right at each other. And they're both looking pissed off. And uh, Alex says to Xander, just keep walking. And Xander says, you just stay away from when Rizjack. You know, Rice Jacks. And uh, he's like, she's a grown woman. And she can decide who she wants to be. 
you know, and uh, they were they were getting into it, and um, he tells him, you know, that if he doesn't stay away from her, that he's going to make him pay. And, um, oh, okay, yeah, so, now we move on to Wednesday, um, the Alex and Xander face-off, I was just telling you about, okay, they were talking about something, and he, he said this, and this was hilarious, um, uh, Okay, so Xander says to Alex, because Alex was spoiled, has been spoiled his whole life, and Xander was like a sidekick, you know. He wasn't even acknowledged till many, many years, and he barely got anything from his family. Because I think his mother was, you know. Anyway, uh, Xander says to him, he said, You lucky, spoiled, cocky. Little pisser. You really are you're, you're lucky, spoiled, cocky little pisser. That's what Xander said to Alex. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. Okay, so, um, Wendy takes trip breakfast. And this is on Wednesday. She takes trip breakfast, and, um, they're eating, and she's wiping a little something off his face, and in comes Johnny. And then Johnny goes around. He doesn't say anything about that, but he goes around and tells Trip, Look, I feel bad. I got you in trouble. I want to talk to your supervisor and let him know that, you know, it was me. You had nothing to do with it. You didn't even know anything about it. And uh, he said, No, it's fine. It's fine. You know, but he saw that affection between them that Wendy don't know. Uh, but he was talking to Wendy, Wendy, Wendy after him and Tripp got through with their little thing then. You know, Wendy said, I appreciate you trying to make this right with Tripp. And he said, well, I did it, and it was wrong, and I'm doing the best I can to make it right. <laughs> okay, so, um, Lee still pulling out all the stops to keep Gabby with him. So, he gives her this box and tells her he's got her something. And, uh, I think the name on the box was Saxton's or something like that. And she opens the box and there's just like a bunch of papers in there. At first she said, you went shopping at Saxton's? And he's like, open the box. And she opened the box and there was a bunch of papers in there. And she just threw it on the couch. And he told her what it was. And it's a business opportunity for her to own her own fashion line again. With this company. Lee done set everything up. You know, she's a shoe-in if she wants to do it. And, um, you know, he's telling her, I believe in you, Gabby. I, I believe in you. You know, you're just never going to let you run the mirror. You know. So, uh, we see her later in the week looking those papers over. So, I think she would do good in fashion. She did before. She very much can run any company. In my opinion. Um... She thinks he's just trying to do everything he can to just get her back. So, uh, Stefan and EJ, they have their wor their words, and uh, EJ says, so this is war, and he said, yeah. And then later, you hear him talking about they're going to try to work together, so. They're both saying they're going to try to work together, and they're both lying. They're going to try to get each other and take each other out. And I hate to see it. Man, I hate to see it. But I'm a little aggravated with Stefan. Uh, I thought he was going to be a better dude, you know. And I hate it because I really don't want him hooking up with Gabby if he's just going to teach her to lie still and cheat more. So, um, she needs a better guy. Anyway, um, EJ invited Lee Chin to be allies with him, to try to work together to keep Gabby married to him and away from Stefan. Now, I don't know if Lee Shin's going to, you know, accept this offer or not, but 
we'll see about that because Lee wants nothing better than to just hold on to Gabby. He doesn't care how if he can keep her from Stefan. And of course, EJ don't want her with Stefan because they're going to kick him out of the company and take over to America in the process. Okay, and that was Wednesday. Now, Thursday, Patch goes to Washington, D.C., to the ISA office where he is chatting with Boy Donovan. You know, he's Shane Donovan's son. I forget what his name is, and I don't recall them even saying his name. Uh, he used to date John's son, Paul. Well, funny you should say that, ma'am. Really? Why? Because at that very time, um, John is visiting Paul in San Francisco, California. Uh, where he's also talking to him about why him and this other guy, Shane's guy, Shane's son, broke up. and He gets on him about some stuff, and that whole conversation bothered me. Because John was stepping out of his bounds, really. Um, so, um, they're all looking for Megan Hathaway. They're all looking for Megan Hathaway. Uh, Megan, of course, gives all the girl gals a shot, wakes them all up. And then they're getting out of their incubators. And uh, they notice Kate's gone. Because Megan takes Kate. She wants to use Kate as a guinea pig for a new serum that who our friend Dr. Roth of course it is me I'm a genius you shouldn't make a genius hungry did you get those little packs of crackers uh he loves that cl Brady clam chowder man he'll do anything for that uh so um that's who made the vial. They don't tell you that, but who else? You figure that out by the end of this week. And we're on Thursday, by the way. So, um, Megan takes Kate, explains to Kate that she needs continued medication or continued help recovering from all those years that she was deceased. And that someone made her the serum that they believe would benefit her. But there's a caveat to it, she said. And that's not something you put on crackers. And she said, um, you could also die from it. So she wants to use Kate as her guinea pig to give her this. And she's like, but you'll love the benefits, even though you don't need the same benefits as I. You'll thank me for them later. You know, I don't want to tell you where my head went thinking about that. Uh, but any, unless it, you know, get, adds years on your life or something. So, I don't think um, Kate ends up wiggling out of this handcuff or tied. They've got her hands tied. She's got her hands tied. She's restrained. And uh, she's getting the vial, getting ready to shoot Katie up. And she's like, well, there's just one thing, Megan. And Megan's like, what? And she's like, you tied the, the, the handcuffs too loose, and I got loose. And she took her fist, and she busted her right in her face and knocked her out. You know, the vial went flying, the syringe went flying, and Megan went flying. Blah. That girl was out, man. So, um, meanwhile, in another room in this place, wherever they are, Kayla and Marlena are trying hard to rig up something to open the lock and get out of where they are. Uh, so, Kate opens the door and runs right into who? Mr. Bo Brady. Now, he was acting a little confused, like he didn't specifically remember Kate, but some things he did remember the with him acting so weird my first thoughts it didn't take long for me to clue into I don't think he's actually Bo Brady because if he was he wouldn't be nothing would keep him away from his family and getting back to hope so he's walking around freely in this place I'm thinking he's in cahoots with Megan she's had Roth brainwash him or something 
you know, I don't know, but something ain't right. So, you know, Kate's glad to see Bo and all, and she's like, let's get out of here. Kayla and Marlena are here, and we got to find them and get out of here. So, he's like, oh, no, we can't leave. And she's like, why? And he's like, because we got to go through there. And he's, she's like, where Megan is? And she's like, he's like, yeah, we got to get the keys. All these doors automatically lock. So she goes in for him to get the keys. And he's over lovingly picking Megan up, trying to get her to come too. He's like, wow, you really knocked her out. And she's like, forget her. Let's get out. And then I think Kate was just turning to get out herself after she pretty much figured out Bo's not on my side. Why does he care what's happening with her? Um, and he told Kate, you stop right there. And uh, Megan's coming too a little bit. And he's like, don't worry about her. I think she just figured out she got played. So Bo is in cahoots or has been brainwashed or something. And, uh, you know, Bo and uh, Megan were high school sweethearts. And this is where all this is stemming from. She always wanted Bo back. So she got the prison. She put them together and saved Bo. That's how Bo got back from beyond Salem. Um, so anyway, Bo ends up pulling up a gun on Kate. So there she is. She's stuck there. Um, John visits Paul. Uh, yeah, um, okay, this is a, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. So then, uh, at the same time all this is going on in this big warehouse, psst, moat, I don't know, some kind of castle thing, I don't know what it is, I, I'm not sure. But Megan Hathaway's got it on the lockdown, I can tell you that. Okay, so meanwhile, Kate, Kayla, and Marlena found some wire and they're you know and Kayla's like Steve showed me how to do this so she's trying to pick her way out meanwhile you see that Patch and John are in this place because Donovan's son stepped out of the room specifically to let Patch look at the information they had on Megan Hathaway which wasn't that much they had a 12% chance she might be in this location so um they're trying to also get in on this side of the of the door. So they they tricked us because they showed us in the previews for this week that Marlena and Kayla oh, they stand back and Patch and John break in and there they are. That's not what happened. So Patch and John break in this room and there's somebody standing there holding a gun on, gun on them. And who's that? Hope Brady. Welcome home, Bo and Hope. And um, they had long conversations about what was going on and Hope said she was there trying to find Megan and this all stemmed from her obsession with Bo. Yada, yada. Meanwhile, Kayla got the door to click and she stopped by because somebody was trying to open the door and they gasped for air and who's at their door? Roth. So there's the confirmation you need that of course Roth is in cahoots with Megan and explains this to Drs. Marlena and Drs. Kayla that you know it's my loyalty to the Demata family and whatever Megan wants I will do for her. And that's what he said. And that's a wrap for this week from the 13th to the 17th. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in Salem. Oh, no, what happened?